The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, welcome to another CW webinar, this time from my home to yours. I'm Carolina and me and my team uh, are here to bring you the main highlights of the volume forecast report, the first half 2020 update. On today's agenda, we will start with an introduction of our company, what it is that we do and what we have to offer. After that, we will share some information about today's presenters and provide you with an overview of what you can expect from this report, our methodology, and so on and so forward. We will soon after that uh, share the highlights of the new volume forecast report uh, this time of the year, the April update, uh, and where we will, of course, answer today's question, what could be the impact of the coronavirus in cement demand in 2020? So to answer this question, we, of course, will start with the economic and construction overview, where we present macroeconomic, the current macroeconomic scenario. We will then, of course, move to the, the meat of the report, uh, 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 highlight on cement consumption and we will leave you with closing remarks and the key takeaways uh, of this presentation. For today's presentation I would like to introduce Prashant Singh, uh, Associate Director at CW Group's Group. Prashant is based in Mumbai, India. Uh, of course myself, Carolina Pereira, Advisor, Advisory and Research Manager at CW Group as well as Juliana Vieira, our, my colleague, business analyst, both of us based in Portugal. Now, uh, please bear with me for a couple of minutes where I give you a small and quick overview of uh, what is CW Group. CW Group is presented across three distinct verticals, uh, advisory, research, and media. Under advisory, CW works with major co global consultancies in leading uh, institutions, including World Bank and uh, investment funds on multiple projects. Uh, we provide consulting and advisory expertise on a diverse product portfolio. Of course, during these challenging times, we have helped multiple industry participants on their decision-making process. Uh, this uh, help and our work comes into play in multitude of, of areas. We have done feasibility studies in uh, the Horn of Africa, in terms of geographies, uh, I mean, uh, market assessments for industries in South America, uh, market entry strategies in the Middle East. Now, moving on to the research branch, and of course, the branch where uh, this, uh, the report that we are presenting now uh, can be found. Uh, CW focuses on a study on cement demand at the global level, as well as detailed and industry and country reports. We provide historical as well as forecasts for markets in a variety of products, including, again, one of our main products, which we are here to talk about today, the volume forecast report, one of our best sellers and the product that we are 
of course, uh, very well known for. We also provide commodity price assessments for cement, clinker, and pet coke. Under the media branch, we uh, have and we can provide online access to, you, you can have access to an online uh, vast database. Uh, we also have multiple newsletters that focus on themes such as cement, building materials, coal, pet coke, bulk shipping, and also paper and pulp. We, we also help hold uh, uh, industry-specific meetings. In this case, I'm talking about CW summits, uh, where I had the pleasure of attending in the beginning of January in Miami, where I met multiple uh, high-level um, business participants. And we are actually, due to the success of the, of the America's edition, we are preparing right now um, a new uh, editions focused on Europe, North Africa, and also Middle East uh, in Madrid for later, of course, later, later in the year. Please contact us if this was something that you would be interested in participating. Now, let's see what this report include what you can find find in this in this report the update version of the um, of this report is published uh, at the very beginning of april uh, and the quantitative update is publishing um, this being the the quantitative update in the extended version that normally goes out in the month of October. Our report, our report includes um, detailed analysis of cement production, consumption, net trade, and capacity. Of course, this also can be found in this update, but of course, the dynamic of these two reports is that the fact that for this one, we provide revisions uh, and we explain our revisions on 2019 um, numbers. And of course, uh, uh, for our forecast until 2024. Um, for this particular update, we felt the need to revise our methodology, given the unfolding events. This, this in practical terms means that we worked on a three scenario basis, uh, where we tabulated a much larger data set, covering a global, regional, and country level analysis of around 57 markets. Here in this map, as you can see, uh, it represents the footprint covered by our volume forecast report. This is, it is our constant endeavor to increase our coverage, but of course also depends on the availability and um, of course consistency of uh, information. As you can see, there's still, uh, Quite a lot of work that we could potentially work on when it comes to Africa, and as I already expressed, this is it is our constant endeavor to to add as much markets as, as possible. For the methodology, and this is of course is I'm just scratching the surface. This is a much a much more in-depth, there's a much more in-depth overview of this in, in our report. Uh, the um, VFR includes historical annual data on cement production, output capacity, consumption, and net rate. Uh, forecasts are made country by country based on past tendencies and microeconomic data, such as GDP and population. Regional forecasts are extrapolated by the cluster of sampled markets. Unlike previous editions of the VFR, in these editions, as I already expressed, uh, we are providing our clients with two additional scenarios. Now um, I will pass the presentation to my colleague Prashant. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. He will now start by providing a macroeconomic analysis analysis on these challenging times. Take it away. Thank you, Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, good morning, everybody.
uh, a pleasure to have you uh, with uh, today uh, for this webinar. Uh, next slide, please. So um, what, our, what we wanted to show on the slide was uh, that, as you can see, uh, the IMF, which is uh, one of the world's most trusted sources in terms of economic data forecasting, uh, has constantly revised its expectations for global growth uh, within the last three months, uh, highlighting how volatile these changes are and how difficult these economic times uh, are because of the multitude of factors that are impacting global growth. Um, in fact, it's the, the IMF information, which is you see on the screen, was incorporating data for China's GDP growth as of February, which is the last statement they made about uh, a GDP revision from 6.1 to 5.8 for China. Um, they have, uh, they're going to announce their uh, economic update in the month of April, later this month, where we will see their expectations for their revisions for this year and the forecast for the coming years. But in during that interim period, we already have estimations and uh, from major global banks that the global economy is probably headed for a recession worse than it experienced during the 2009 financial crisis. In fact, all G20 countries are likely to contract or show reduced growth at in GDP at, in the first half of 2020. Furthermore, the socioeconomic and political impact of, uh, of the aftermath of this pandemic will be felt long, long after it has subsided. The loss of millions of jobs globally due to reduction in business activity um, shows that things will not go back to normal even once this virus has been defeated. Just to put that into context, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the US had the highest unemployment numbers in recorded history at 3.28 million filing for unemployment. Spain today just announced that they expect a million people to be unemployed. Uh, and latest reports out of China, which are obviously not confirmed, um, estimate that this pandemic could possibly result in the loss of up to 20 million jobs related to the export sector in China at the end of Q2. So we, we are now talking about real numbers. We're talking about real people and you can imagine the impact that that would have across GDP, uh, obviously, and its uh, consequent impact on construction in terms of demand for new houses. And therefore, of course, as it's relevant to uh, everyone here, the demand for cement. The impact of this pandemic is still Quant it, the quantification is impossible because it's still raging as we are as we talk today. On the next slide, I will uh, sort of give you an understanding of uh, when this started and where we are at with this pandemic. So next slide, please. So this is just a map that we were able to. Uh, bring to you. Uh, this contains data as of yesterday in terms of the spread of the pandemic. As you can see, uh, most of Europe is all blotted. So is China. You see large swaths of the United States and uh, the emergence in South America. Africa has as of yet been relatively unstaged, but uh, um, it is already facing two different uh, issues, including a locust plague on the east coast of Africa and the collapse in oil prices is negatively going to impact uh, major economies like Nigeria to sort of weather this pandemic storm when it finally hits those countries. Uh, so we are, um, 
you know, uh, in for a very, very difficult period. Um, even though it started uh, in China, the United States is now the new epicenter for this uh, disaster. Um, Italy and China, Italy and Spain now uh, are, have more than three times the number of total deaths that have been reported out of China. And uh, as of right now, the total current uh, coronavirus case count is uh, almost 955,412. So we're now nearing a million coronavirus cases globally in the next you know, few hours. Next slide, please. So if the coronavirus pandemic was the only thing that was infecting the world, it would be bad enough. However, uh, that's certainly not the case. So we have the emergence of a completely unexpected oil price war between the Saudi Arabian, uh, the Saudi Arabia and the Russian Federation uh, in terms of a power play as to who uh, will sort of dictate the world market for oil uh, in the coming decades. And uh, while uh, both Russia and Saudi Arabia may be relatively capable of weathering the storm, uh, other OPEC members and other uh, major oil producers, including many big companies in the United States who depend on shale production, whose costs are significantly higher, um, are already facing financial ruin. Uh, in fact, as you can see, the oil price limb, uh, price as of yesterday night uh, was around $20 um, and uh, 50 cents. It's almost back to the price that was witnessed on a global level in 1998, post the Asian financial crisis. The next period of uh, time where you see a level where oil has broached $20 is the relatively benign period of the 1960s where you had this average price before the oil spike you see in 1973. Um, during the Arab-Israeli war. There are discussions as of today that some analysts predict that oil could even go long as low as $10 if immediate uh, action is not taken by you know, Saudi Arabia and Russia and the US to sort of get their strategy together. Uh, so, um, we are in for a very difficult or volatile period of time. And most importantly, it is coming at a disastrous time for some emerging market economies where they will have less revenues to fight what could turn into a global healthcare nightmare as is already visible in the United States. Um, one can imagine what would happen if this pandemic was to uh, you know, expand or uh, in the same manner as it is in the U.S. in New York, say if you replaced New York with Lagos, Nigeria. And I, I, and I think that uh, we all understand what that would do with Nigeria's ability to fight, uh, given the state of the infrastructure, as well as reduced revenues from oil prices, almost five times uh, from like, or, or three times as of now, from $60 to 20, and if it goes down to 10, then obviously five times uh, less revenues to fight uh, this pandemic. So um, next slide, please. I would now want to thank you for uh, your attention and I will now uh, pass on this presentation for uh, the data analysis that you're all here for to my colleague, uh, Juliana. Thank you. Thank you, Prashan. Hello, everybody. My name is Juliana. Uh, I'd like, uh, please, next slide, please. Unlike previous editions of the VFR report, 
In the first half of 2020 edition, CW Research has taken the honors of providing its clients two additional scenarios, excluding the base scenarios, of course, that we are the report is based on. Uh, a conservative and an optimist scenario complement our traditional output. We have taken this step due to the last events resulting from the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. And if that alone was not enough, we also have the oil price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia that have changed the industry dynamics with global implications, at least in the short to medium term, as they both are still unfolding. Globally, CW research conservative scenario is estimated to show a decline of around 12% in 2020 while optimistic scenario is estimated to decline 7%. For the global excluding China, conservative scenario expected a decline of 10% and the positive one a decline of 5%. Next slide, please. So to provide a context of the global market scenario, now I will present W based scenario estimations for the global cement consumption growth in 2020. The harmful combination of the coronavirus pandemic and the oil price war are dragging down global economic, economic growth. And even if China's cement demand scenario turn around for the rest of the year, the global cement consumption will not be able to turn the declining the economy cost of the pandemic generate the shutdown of many construction business that were not able to sustain through the lockdown period. So globally, CW research estimates for the base scenario a decline of more than 9% in 2020 of cement consumption while the global excluding China is likely to decrease almost 8%. The, the cost of the pandemic is expected to rise business bankruptcy and unemployment rates. And with that in mind, we expect to see a cement demand contraction, at least in the first half of 2020, for the Eurozone, especially in Italy and Spain markets. And of course, a combination of, again, the economic cost of the pandemic, but also the fuel price war has reduced the price of crude oil. And cement consumption in the Middle East is expected to decrease almost 10% in 2020. Now for the next slide, please. Now, when we look cement demand growth by regions, we expect a double digit decline in China based on the worst GDP number for the first quarter since the late 1970s. Once again, the pandemic has led to many construction firms to bankrupt, affecting the demand for cement. Uh, and in addition to that, China has already significant, significant cement stocks and if, even if the demand work to pick up, we forecast a double-digit decline for China utilization rates too. In the US, the pandemic is growing strong, affecting the economic growth. The United States expects to decline in the first and in the second quarter. And for 2020, CW estimates a decline of almost 10% in cement demand because of corona and oil prices. Also in the US, millions of people have lost their jobs and this has a negative impact on demand for new houses. And this of course affects directly the demand for cement. Even if the economy goes back to normal tomorrow, some of the jobs that we were that were lost will not come back. The recovery will take longer than most people anticipate. 
for for Asia excluding China because of the pandemic CW estimate declines in India, Vietnam, Pakistan and Bangladesh. But the demand decline is not estimated as bad as for the major markets such as Europe, North America and China. Now I would like to leave you with the closing remarks of our report. Please note that we focus on the highlights of this update and of course you can find more details information in our report. So economic growth is no longer guaranteed as the macroeconomic scenario becomes worse and major economies are expected to see constructions at least in the first half of 2020 including the United States, Eurozone and China. Construction sectors in the affected regions are likely to get impact severely due to the pandemic. And the result economic fallout, including bank bankruptcies of companies, and it, this of course includes construction companies, uh, and the rising of unemployment will negatively impact cement demand. Despite all of this, markets in Asia, excluding China, as I said, India, Vietnam, are still expected to have a smaller percentage declines in cement consumption. So the current scenario was very un unexpected, even late this year last year sorry but the black swan event of the pandemic and the improbable oil price war has created a new gloomy scenario i would like to bring in our attention to challenges in the world the world is face, facing and since the time that this webinar has started there has been an increase on the coronavirus case And so please stay home and stay safe. Thank you for your time and attention and see you on our next webinar.